If it had to do with a worsening of the relationship between the administration and Saudi Arabia, it would have been natural that oil spiked. But I think if you look, the very closing minutes in Europe, uh, the Italian bond yields uh, shot up, and it, it, luckily for them, they were closing. I think it would have done more damage to the equity market there. Drahi said that there were high risks if all of the participants didn't stick by the general EU rules. That was taken as a swipe at the Italians, uh, running a budget that uh, is kind of outside what the EU wanted to see. So I think the viewers want to be careful. A lot of people going around saying it's all about Mnuchin. Um, I would uh, give you a dollar to a donut that it is not. It is more about and Italy. Just, and just to explain to viewers, Bob, who aren't following yeah. Italy that closely, their proposed budget would hike social Much spending, higher. would cut taxes, would boost the deficit the, in defiance. They're trying rules. to grow their way out with deficit spending, which would be a great thing for people, a normal country to do. But the EU is not normal. There are rules that confine government's ability to act, not just on the currency, but on their, bu on their budget. And essentially, the Italians are challenging that, saying, we need to break out of this low growth strategy. Uh, it's not unreasonable expectation for them to want to do that, but Draghi is reminding them, if you go ahead and bust the budget, you're breaking our rules, and we may not be around. This is the threat to help you. You want us to bail you out because you're going to go outside the bounds? Uh-uh. That's not going to happen. And I, I think that's a very, very important reminder and of the constraints that they have to operate in when you're a country in the EU. And Art, I mean, we're seeing yields on, on some of these European bonds, Italy, for example, ticking to multi-year highs here. And mind you, it has been risk off here all day. We've got the 10-year moving back below 3.2 right now. I mean, flight to safety, how do we think about this, especially given the fact that globally bond yields have been sort of moving in tandem? No, that's, that's exactly what it is. Earlier, the yield on the 10-year had moved up, as Bob aptly pointed out somewhat earlier, uh, very close to former highs. When this thing broke out in Italy, when the Italian bonds started to get peppered around, that's when they came back with this mild flight to safety, and that is why our yields are no longer up. They are down as people look for the security of U.S. Treasury bonds. And so, Bob, flight to safety, that explains why the NASDAQ is off more than the Dow and the S&P right now, even though, I mean... Yeah, we, but we saw this earlier, remember, yeah. I, this is a continuation of a trend. We stick with what we were there, China concerns, higher rates, and margin pressures, and, and so the... the the, the highest beta stocks are going to move down on that. So semis were weak right at the open. So this is a trend that's been around for a while. I don't think we should, we're abandoning those trends. We have a new issue here with the Draghi comments and the veiled threat to Italy not to go along with the program. But I think, by and large, on a macro level, China is still a much bigger story that we're going to be dealing with right well, now. And uh, the biggest losers, the laggards on the S&P art, United Rental, Textron, Snap-on, mm -hmm. Sealed Air, even Activision are all in that, of that, they're of a piece, right? Yeah, and, and don't forget, we've had a market that's had a very shaky experience for a couple of weeks. And when you started down, you began to do some technical damage again. We're down here retesting the 200-day moving average in the S&P. Uh, so that's critical. So I think the viewers want to be careful. Uh, this thing could take on a little bit of a life of its own if they break below some of these support levels you can yeah. get, maybe not a trap door effect, but you can get a roll on it. One thing you want to watch is the volume. It is not particularly strong. And this week, the volume has not been that strong. Last week, we saw whooshes of breathtaking volume, just dumping stuff on the market. That's not happening uh, right now. So it, it may be that the buyers are simply stepping back here, or we make this distinction all the time, that is a difference between a buyer's strike and sellers trying to go out. Buyers are cautious here, therefore, prices have to drop to attract them at this point.